Hi Map fans, this is a video about EOS Land Viewer, as you can see from the screen. So the first thing we need to do is find EOS Land Viewer, and you can do that just by typing in EOS Land Viewer to Google. I posted a video about EOS Land Viewer some time ago, and the interface has changed a lot since then. I thought I'd give you an update just to show you what's new with this. Over on the right hand side we have a list of data sets. Some of these I was not aware of until I came back to EOS Land Viewer, so it looks pretty comprehensive. We've got operative sensors at the top and inoperative sensors at the bottom. On the left hand side we've got the main map window and we can use that to set our AOI or area of interest. I'm going to set my area of interest to my usual spot, which is near San Pedro Sula in Honduras and it's Casuco National Park, which is a cloud forest, obviously quite challenging for satellite imagery given that there's a lot of cloud. In terms of imagery, I'm going to be looking for Sentinel-2 imagery from the European Space Agency. You can see there the archive is from 2015 and to turn this on, I'm just going to click on it. I have my extent set with these little corners at the side, that's where we're searching. And on the right hand side you can see the imagery that this is pulling up. Here's a closer look at the imagery and as you scroll over these it will highlight on the map a blue square to show you where that imagery falls. With it being a cloud forest you can see that a lot of these images are very cloudy. And up at the top here, we have a control to set the percentage of cloud cover. So I'm going to go in here and just change my cloudiness down to 10%. We can also change the sun elevation, but I'll leave that for now. You also have the option to set a date or a series of dates if you're looking for a particular point in time. And the orange dates that are highlighted show when the sensor was visiting this area. I'm just going to go for any date, I just want to find one that works, and here we've got one for the 7th of April 2018. This one looks relatively cloud free, so I'm just going to click on that and, oh what's this? Land Viewer is now asking us to sign up or sign in, and I do not have an account with Land Viewer. So let's sign up. Signing up couldn't be easier, just click sign up. You'll be taken to the sign up page where you can input your personal details and claim a password. I'm just going to use Google Plus, use my Google account, so I'll just choose an account. And then we go to the privacy policy and I am going to read that in depth and agree. Once you've signed in and signed up, you'll be taken back to Land Viewer and at the top you'll see a download limit, 10 free scenes per day. I'm just going to get back to the image we were looking at, so I'll go into cloud cover and set that to 10% and here's that previous image. Once I select it, now that I'm signed in, it'll load up into the map viewer. Now I can zoom and pan about the image to investigate it and see if it's what I'm looking for. Let's have a look around. And you can see here that at the top, selecting this image is used one of my 10 scenes per day. If I was to select a different scene, that will load up. And again, up at the top there, it's used another of my free scenes. So just be aware of that. It also also give you some server space to download images too. If you look for the little cloud symbol and click it, that will start saving the image to EOS storage. I'll show you EOS storage in a later video, but for now, just know that the scene is saved to your online storage. When this goes green, it is saved there. The other option is to download locally, i.e. to your computer, and if you click the arrow on the right, you can start that process. There's a number of different resolutions available and different formats too. So we have JPEG, KMD, and GeoTIFF. Above the download button on the right hand side, we also have the band combinations. And these are really useful. You can 
For example, here I've clicked on color infrared, which shows vegetation. And it'll also give you how these bands were derived. So in NDVI, for example, you can see what the band calculation was. If I click on agriculture here, then we'll see the map window change to show us the agricultural combination. Now, if you're not sure what these are, on the right hand side, you've got an information button. And if you click that, it will tell you what the colors actually signify. So here we've got coniferous forests appearing as dark green rich, while deciduous forests will appear as bright green. So it gives you some information if you're not used to working with band combinations previously. And again, you've got the band combinations at the top as well. So this is a pretty neat thing that EOS have put together for us, quite cool. Also rather nifty at the top, instead of the default, you can select a custom band combination. So I'll just click on new here. And for composite bands, it'll show you all the available bands, which is quite nice. And you can just drag and drop them into the different color guns. So I'm just doing this rather at random. I'll put the band eight into red and stick band nine into blue. And you can see it updates in real time in the map window as well. So that's a rather ugly combination we've got there, but hey ho. There's also these controls over on the left hand side, which I haven't mentioned yet, but uh, I'll just show you a couple of these and you can work through the rest in your own time. With the identify button, we can click on a pixel and it'll tell us what the values are and also give us the altitude as well. Quite useful. I'm not too sure what toggle labels does as yet. So I'll keep working on that. If you do know, please leave me a comment below and you can also change the layers list. So instead of just having a map underneath, we could have a satellite, but only if we're a pro user. Let's try the other one. Let's try terrain. And that should bring us up terrain. I'll go up here and use the slide function as well. So we can look at two images at once and slide between them so you can see how that differs. That's quite nice. And below that, we've got terrain. Now there is a scale down at the bottom. If we go and have a look at this, you can see what the colors actually represent and that's meters above sea level. So pretty useful all in all, uh, quite an impressive setup that EOS have created. Let's go back to the scene downloading and I'm gonna use the analytic download option here. It will give you a list of the layers that are available to download, so different bands. And if you put a check mark next to them, you can download those. We've also got different indices. And let's go back here, just check a couple of these. And you have some options down at the bottom to merge bands. I'm going to turn that off. I don't want to merge them. And you can crop by extent, which we'll look at in a second. So once I've chosen these, I'm going to hit download and uh oh, we need to upgrade. So that's not part of the free service. If we go back to the visual download, so non-analytic, I'm going to go for 30 meter pixels. I'm going to crop by extent and I'm going to hit download. And once again, an upgrade is required. So just keep that in mind. I uh, just want to show you what you can do with the free account not crop by extent and not have the extra large download. In fact, it's just the medium download that you can do with the free account or the, small, the low resolution. So large resolution does not work either. So just keep that in mind. And once you've found a download that you want, so here the medium resolution, uh, you'll just get the usual pop-up box and you can save the file to your computer as you normally would. So I'll just save this. It's coming in JPEG format. I'll just hit OK here. And you download. It'll ask you where you'd like to save it. I'm just going to put it in my EOS Land Viewer folder. And we can save that to our machine. There's a quick look at EOS Land Viewer, the free version. I hope you enjoyed it and as always please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment below. Happy mapping!